Hello everybody. I welcome all of you back to this presentation on design of tension members. This is the seventh session and the last session that we have in this particular series planned for design of tension members. Before we go further, so let me just try to quickly take you through what we have done okay, in the earlier six sessions okay, and then start okay, this particular session. If you just try to recollect, so what we had done. So we had looked into all these aspects starting from introduction to axillary tension members, factors affecting the strength of uh, member, okay, boards of tension failure, how to calculate the design strength of uh, a tension member, concepts of shear lag and to overcome that, okay, how do we uh, provide lug angles, correct. So we had seen all these things and finally we were trying to discuss numerical examples of different type. If you just try to recollect quickly, so we have finished six different types of examples with respect to bolted and uh, welded connection. So we will start okay with the next problem that we have here so this is problem 7 okay and it is connected with uh, proportioning okay of uh, okay welded connection so just try to look at the problem so we have two angles okay isa 175 by 8 connected back to back okay on either side of a 10 mm thick gazette plate okay now this particular member is carrying okay, a working load or pull of 300 kN. Now we are just trying to talk about design of welded connection. So in this problem please understand that uh, the member in this particular case, okay, we are not trying to look into that, we are just talking about how to design the welded connection in this particular case. And uh, we are just trying to understand that all these welds okay, are uh, at the workshop that is uh, shop welded. Okay. Now the very first thing that we are trying to look at is okay, how do you arrive at the uh, size of the weld. Now we just try to look at class 10582. Okay. So we are just trying to talk about a criteria where we are just trying to talk about rounded edge, rounded edge, correct. So whenever we are just trying to weld okay, around a rounded wedge, the thickness of the weld or size of the weld okay, should be limited to, okay, should be limited to, it should not be more than 3 4 the thickness okay, of that particular uh, uh, I mean, uh, weld uh, thickness. So the weld thickness, I mean sorry, the, the angle thickness is 8 mm. So 3 4 of uh, the thickness of the angle correct, is nothing but 6 mm. So please understand okay, at no cost, right? the size of the weld should exceed 6 millimeters. This is from one criteria. Now coming to the second criteria, okay? so this is at the square or corners okay? where we have okay, the, the, the uh, I mean, uh, uh, angle. Okay? If this is the plate and this is the uh, section that we are trying to talk about, so this is 90 degrees. Okay? That is what we call as square edge and we are just trying to do okay, uh, a welding correct okay in this particular region correct in this particular region you are just trying to put a weld that is a square edge so whenever we have a square edge okay, according to this particular uh, clause 10581 okay so the size of the thickness of the weld okay if i just try to put a weld like this right this one okay so the size of this should be okay 1.5 mm okay less than 1.5 mm less than the thickness of this particular uh, plate. So in this particular case again, okay, so that is T minus 1.5, T being the thickness of the angle 8, 8 minus 5, so that is 6.5. So in according to this we had 6 mm and according to this it is 6.5, that is the maximum values. We are just trying to choose okay, the size okay, of the weld as okay, 6 millimeters. Right? So this is what we are trying to talk about. Okay? So let us try to uh, have a weld of size 6 mm. Now coming to the throat thickness, okay, I hope you know the throat thickness. So if I just try to talk about okay, the uh, weld like this and then if I have okay, a fillet weld in this particular region, okay, so throat thickness that is this is T, 
okay. So, that is nothing but okay, right. It is nothing but 0 0.7 times okay, the size of S, 0 0.75 S. So, it is nothing but T, correct. So, according to this, it is 4.2 mm because right, this is 6 millimeters. So, if this is 6 millimeters, so that would be correct 4.2 mm. Now, as per uh, the class 10531, correct 10531, okay. So, this value, correct, should be more than 3 mm, correct, should be more than 3 mm, correct. So, that means this is more than 3 mm, that is what we have here and correct, it should be less than 0 0.7 times the thickness, okay, of the angle, correct. So, thickness of the angle is 8, correct. So, that is uh, 5.6. Correct. So, definitely, so this lies between these two values according to this and hence whatever weld size, okay, that we have assumed is appropriate, okay. So, this is how you can easily arrive at the thickness of the weld that we are trying to have, okay, for this particular problem. Now, once we are through with the uh, size of the weld, correct, size of the weld, we go ahead regarding the force. Now, the force that is uh, uh, given is working load, which is 300, okay. We are just trying to have a factored load multiply by 1.5, you got the value as 450 kilonewton. If you notice that we have two angles back to back, correct, to resist this force. So, what is the load carried by one angle, correct? So, that would be 450 by 2, that would be 225 kN. So, what you need to understand here is each angle, okay, is going to resist a factored load of 225 kN and we have to proportion the weld such that it resists this particular load, correct. Now, coming to this one, okay. So, next thing is, okay, we are just trying to find the length of weld, correct, required to resist this load of 225 kN, correct. So, according to class 105711, correct, right, the design tensile strength of the weld is calculated as what, okay, stress into area. So, LW into T. What is LW? It is the length of the weld that we have in that entire connection. T is the throat thickness that we have here, correct. So, length of the connection, length of the weld multiplied by throat thickness will give the area, okay, of weld which will resist, okay, the force, correct. So, that multiplied by, okay, Fu divided by root 3 into gamma M1, okay. So, this entire term will give you the uh, 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 tensile stress carrying capability of that particular uh, weld. Now, in this particular case, what we are trying to assume is, we are trying to assume the value of Td, okay, as 225 kNm. So, that means, okay, whatever load that we had talked about, that is one angle should resist a force of 225 kN. So, that means we are trying to say that, look, okay, th this particular weld, okay, should resist a force of 225 kN. So, I am just trying to take this value of Twd is not, not, nothing but 225 into 10 to the power of 3 newtons. I have just converted k into newtons, correct. So, I have this value, okay. Regarding T, it is nothing but the throat thickness, correct. So, we have just looked into that, okay. 0 0.7 times, okay, uh, 6, correct. 0 0.7 into 6, right. So, that is size of the weld, that is 4.2, okay. So, Fu, okay, the, the ultimate strength, okay, of the weld or it could be the plate, the lesser of the two, that is 410 mega Pascals and the value of uh, gamma M, Okay, in this particular case, is gamma MW, it should be gamma MW, right. So, that is nothing but 1.25, okay. So, with this information, so we can easily get the value of gamma, I mean LW and the value of LW in this particular case is 283 millimeters. So, what you need to understand is, okay, the total length of weld required in this particular case is, okay, that is 283 millimeters. Now, important thing that you need to understand here is, okay, so this particular total length of the weld okay, will be provided, okay, at the top, this is the angle. So, it will be provided at the top as well as bottom of the angle, correct, right. When we have the angle here, right, okay, so when we try to connect the angle with the gazette plate. So, that is a gazette plate. So, this is the angle that we are trying to talk about. So, we are just trying to have the weld, okay, on the top edge as well as on the bottom edge, okay, of the uh, angle, something like that. Now, what you note, what you need to notice here is the angle section is not symmetric correct with respect to its centroidal axis. So, if we just try to look at this particular cross section, if we just try to look at this particular cross section, correct. So, this is the CG that we are trying to talk about, correct, CG line, okay, correct. So, the, the cross section that we have here at the top and bottom are obviously different, correct. So, we can easily notice that the, the 
uh, CG or the uh, axis of bending is slightly lower towards the lower side when compared to the top side. Okay, you can clearly notice okay that particular uh, uh, thing, right? So what you need to understand is this total force, whatever we are trying to put here, this total force, okay, which the angle has to carry, which the angle has to carry, correct? Is it all right? Okay, that tensile force 225 kN, okay, will be resisted, okay, by this weld as well as this weld. So what you need to notice here is because this value of P, okay, whatever value of P that we are trying to talk about here, correct? So this value of P, right? This value of P, that value of P, whatever value of P that we are trying to talk about, okay, will not be distributed as P by 2 and P by 2 at the top and bottom, correct? Because this P is not acting at the midpoint, okay, of these two wells. So you can easily notice that P is closer P is closer, okay, towards the bottom weld when compared to or bottom edge, correct, when compared to the top edge. So we can easily understand that, okay, more, there is uh, out of P, correct, okay, one part is uh, dis, um, resisted by this weld and the other part is resisted by this weld, correct. So the larger value of P, okay, some value, right, okay, major value of P is resisted by the weld, okay, present here, that is in this particular region. Okay, and a smaller part okay, will be resisted by that particular weld because of the positions. Is it all right? So this will attract more force when compared to that particular force. Okay? So this is what you need to understand. Okay? The connection is eccentric. The tensile force transferred by the welds at the two edges of the connecting leg will be different. Correct? They need not be same because okay, it is eccentric. I make clear? And you need to understand that okay, the force that we are trying to have here at the top okay, as well as the bottom, correct, should be proportional, correct. So whatever weld we are going to provide here, whatever weld we are trying to provide here, so this length L1 and L2 will be proportional to the force carried, okay, by this particular uh, weld, that is say I can call this as T1 and that is T2, correct, whereas uh, the total force carried is P. So what you need to understand is, okay, P is the total force carried by the leg, that is 225, Okay, so that will be uh, equated to T1 and T2. What is T1? T1 is a part of P1, P, and T2 is the remaining part of P, correct? So T1, okay, is, or this is closer to P, so obviously you require a larger length of the weld. So this is, okay, that is farther with respect to P, it requires a smaller length of the weld, okay? This is what you need to understand with respect, with respect to this figure. So what I have done is, okay, so let us try to take this as uh, uh, T1, correct and this as T2. So what is T1, correct, what is T1? So T1 is nothing but total length of the weld, correct, multiply by W1 or WS. So what is WS? It is nothing but, okay, strength of the weld per unit length. Look at the unit that we are trying to have here. So 1 mm length, okay, every 1 mm length, okay, can give you a force of uh, um, WSKN. So every 1 millimeter length, okay, it has a strength of WSKN, correct? Is it all right? Am I clear? So if I just try to take it as WS, so what is the total force T1? It's something but L1 multiplied by WS. So this is what we have here. This is force per unit length, KN per mm, KN per mm, correct? And this is mm. So we can notice that, okay, the unit would be kilonewtons. Is it all right? So the total force T1 is calculated as what? Length multiplied by strength of the weld per unit length. Similarly, you can even try to calculate T2. So T2 is nothing but, okay, length of the weld here, right, L2 multiplied by, okay, strength of the weld per unit length. So that is, okay, L2 into WS. So you need to understand that, okay, so T1 is nothing but L1 into WS and T2 is L2 into WS, okay, and L1 and L2 are different in this particular case. Okay. Now, having done this, okay, we just try to equate the moment of T1 and T2 okay, with respect to the CG. So this is the CG line that we are trying to have here, CG line. So what is the moment of T1 with respect to uh, uh, CG? So distance 31 and 69, okay, you can just try to pick up these values from your steel tables. Okay. The position of the CG okay, for this particular angle okay, is, is obtained, okay, from the steel tables. So, the moment of T1 about this point is T1 into 31 
and moment of T2 about C G is T2 into 69. So that is what we have here T1 into 31 should be equal to T2 into 39, 69. Okay? So we are just trying to equate the moment okay, of the two forces T1, T2 okay, acting at the top and bottom welds with respect to the C G. And now we already have calculated what T1 and T2 are. So T1 is L1 times W S and T2 is L2 times W S which I am going to substitute here. So this we saw in the previous slide. Okay, now I am just trying to replace okay, T1 by this and T2 by this number. Correct? Is it all right? And in this particular simplification, so you can easily understand that okay, the strength of the weld okay, per unit length okay, it just tries to go off and then we are left with what? Okay, 31 L1 is equal to 69 L2. Correct? So this you can call it as equation 1. Okay, and further, okay, if we just try to recollect a few slides back, so we said that the total length of weld required is 283 millimeters in this case. 283 mm is the total length, uh, length required. So this would form second equation. So just try to solve 1 and 2. Okay, you got the value of uh, L1 195 okay, and L2 87.73 millimeters. So you can round it off slightly. So you can just try to say L1 is 200 and L2 is 90 millimeters and we are trying to provide okay, this L1 and L2 like this. So L1 200 mm and L2 90 millimeters. Okay, this is how you just try to do the problem. Please understand you cannot divide a 283 into two parts okay, and then just try to put one half here and the remaining half over there in this kind of connection because this connection is eccentric. Correct? Am I make clear? So whatever force okay, that we have here, right, that is P, okay, will not be equally shared okay, by the two welds. You have to be careful. Correct? It all depends on the section that we are trying to talk about. I hope you have understood this particular problem. So this problem is about how to proportion the weld. Correct? Is it all right? First calculate, first arrive at the size of the weld and then calculate the total length of the weld required and step 3 is how to proportion that. Correct? So that means what length of the weld is required here and what length of the weld is required at the other edge. I hope you have understood uh, this particular problem. So let us try to look into the next problem that we have here. Correct? Now, unlike this one, the next problem that we are trying to talk about okay, is a symmetrical section, is a symmetrical section that is with respect to the CG, that is a channel section. So what we have is okay, a tie member okay, consists of uh, okay, uh, uh, two numbers of ISMC channels, correct? I think it is one number, right? Okay. Uh, we have an ISMC channel. So this is a channel that we are trying to talk about in this case, correct? A channel section that we are trying to uh, look at that. Okay. So if you just try to look here. So the channel section would be something like this, okay. And if you have the gusset, right? So gusset would be something like that. So what you notice is in this particular case, if I just try to look at the uh, section XX, look at the section XX, correct? So the top portion and the bottom portion are symmetric, okay. Unlike that of the uh, angle section that we are trying to talk about. So we have uh, an ISMC channel here. Correct, which is connected to a gusset plate, which is connected to a gusset plate. Okay, so two things is what we have. Okay, an ISMC and a gusset plate. Correct, and the size of this is 12 mm thick gusset plate. So this is 12 millimeters thick gusset plate is what we have here. Correct, right? And uh, he says uh, design the welded joint to develop full strength of the tie. So full strength of the tie. So what we are trying to look at here is what we are trying to look at here is. So we want to know. Right? Or we would like to design the weld, correct? Something similar to what we have done in the previous uh, problem. Okay? So calculate the total weld required to develop a force P, okay? develop a force P, which is equal to the full strength of the member. Correct? Right? So last time we had given you a force, say 300 kN uh, working load. But in this particular case, we are trying to say, so the weld that you are trying to uh, arrive at should be equal to Okay, the full uh, I mean, uh, uh, strength of this particular section is what we are trying to talk about. And there is one small uh, 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 data that has been given. Okay, the overlap length is 400 mm. So please understand the ISMC and the gusset plate, okay, they are overlapping one another, obviously, correct? So this is the overlap length. Am I clear? So you can clearly see that, okay, this is the angle uh, channel section and that is a gusset plate. Okay, so the overlap length in this particular case is 400 millimeters, correct, is 400 mm, is the overlap length that we have here, correct. So if your length of the weld exceeds, okay, say maybe 
400 at the top and 400 at the bottom. Okay, you have to think of some arrangement and we are trying to understand how to do that. Correct, because there is a limitation. If there is no limitation, yeah, obviously you can increase the, or, uh, uh, the, the overlap length and then distribute whatever total weld, that total length of the weld that we have uh, calculated both at top and bottom. That would be a simple task. Whereas here, since because this is limited, so the excess length that is, that is required will be distributed in a different arrangement which we are just trying to see over here. Correct? And uh, uh, the, the strength of the plates, okay, all those things are given. So let us try to look into that. Correct? Now the very first thing, okay, that we are trying to talk about in this uh, exercise is, okay, to find the full strength of the tie. Okay, so we are just trying to calculate the total strength of the tie in this particular case. So what is the strength of the tie that we are trying to have here? So that is full strength. Now when we are trying to talk about the full strength of the tie, full strength, so please understand, okay, we are just trying to, okay, use the expression, okay, over here, that is nothing but, okay, TDG equal to FIAG by gamma M naught, correct? So this is the expression that we have, that we have been using to calculate the uh, uh, I mean capacity or strength of the member, okay, with respect to gross section yielding, correct? So the value of Fy is given, correct? And for from the steel table, okay, that is angle, the ang and that is area of one channel section is 3867 mm square, okay? And uh, this is gamma m naught is 1.10. We substitute, okay, in this particular uh, expression, and you got the value as 878.86 kilonewton. So please understand. Okay, the total design capacity, correct, is 878.86 kN. So what we are trying to understand is, okay, so let us assume this to be the full design strength, okay, of the member and for this particular load, okay, let us try to calculate, okay, the total length of the weld required, correct. So this is what we are trying to talk about. So before we start, okay, let us try to talk about the calculation of uh, uh, the, uh, uh, I mean, uh, 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 size of the weld, size of the weld. How do we calculate the size of the weld? So look at this, okay, the same kind of uh, things that we are trying to talk about, correct? So one is, okay, so the size or, or the thickness of the two parts of the angle are given. So this is the web and the flange, okay? And again, we are trying to look into that from steel tables. So if you just try to open out the steel tables, steel tables, correct? So you can just try to get the values of thickness of web and thickness of the flange. We are going to take the lesser of the two thicknesses, okay? So lesser of the two thickness obviously is 7.1 millimeters, correct? So using that information, so let us try to arrive at, okay, the size of the weld, correct? So the first task that we are trying to talk about is, okay, from class 10581, correct? So the maximum thickness that we are trying to have is 1.5 mm lesser than the thickness, okay, least thickness of the section. So what is the least thickness? 7.1. So that is T minus 1.5, that is 7.1 minus 1.5 and that is nothing but 5.6 millimeters, correct? So it should not exceed, okay, 5.6 millimeters. So what we are trying to say is, let us choose, okay, the size of the weld as 5 millimeters, okay? We are trying to choose the size of the weld as 5 millimeters. Okay. Now let us try to go ahead and then understand okay, regarding the throat thickness over here. So as we saw in the previous case, if I am trying to assume okay, the size of the weld as 5, mm, 5 millimeters, so what will be the thickness of the throat, correct? So the thickness of the throat in this particular case is 3.5 millimeters, correct? It is 3.5 millimeters. Now I am going to make a check okay, with respect to the limits okay, of this particular throat thickness. Correct. So we are trying to say that okay, three millimeters. So it definitely 3.5 is more than three millimeters. And okay, the other criteria is 0.7 times okay the thickness okay of uh, the least uh, 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 thickness that we have in the channel section. The least thickness that we have in the channel section is 7.1. So 0.7 times 7.1 happens to be 4.97. So obviously this throat thickness, whatever we are trying to talk about, okay, lies between the two. So what we are trying to say is, okay, this 5 mm, whatever we are trying to talk about, okay, is perfectly fine. Correct? This is what we need to understand. Correct? Now with this information, okay, so let us try to go and calculate, okay, the design strength. 
okay, of the member, okay, that is t, uh, uh, t suffix uh, dj, right. So, please understand the design strength of this particular section is given as 878.26 kilonewtons, 876.28 kilonewtons, okay. Now, what I am trying to do is, I am just trying to replace, okay, this TWD, okay, that is uh, tensile st uh, strength of the weld, okay, given by this particular clause, okay, equal to 87. Uh, 878.86 kN, which is similar to what I had done in my previous problem, and then I am trying to calculate the length of the weld required, correct. So, here LW is the length of the weld required, which I am trying to calculate, T is the throat thickness, okay, FU is nothing but the ultimate strength, okay, of the weld or it could be the plate, whichever is less, and root 3 gamma M1. So, you can clearly notice that, okay, I have assumed, okay, this TWD as uh, T, TDG, that is the full design strength of the plate which is 878.86 uh, into 10 to the power of 3 newtons. I have just converted K into newtons. And then this is the uh, uh, throat thickness, okay, which is nothing but, okay, 0.7 times 5 mm, okay, that is 3.5 mm. So, this is assumed, okay, and, uh, uh, and this is gamma mw, that is 1.25, and that will give you the total length of the weld, which is 1326 millimeters. I make clear this is what we have right now. Now, this particular total length now has to be uh, uh, distributed, correct, in that limited width of, uh, uh, I mean, uh, uh, 400 lap width, okay, this is what we are trying to talk about. Now, look at this, uh, uh, this is important. Now, uh, the section is symmetric, this is important, look at this, section is symmetric, correct, isn't it? So, I did tell you that, okay, the section is symmetric. Right, so that is the channel section that we are trying to talk about. So we just try to look at the section x x x x. So section is symmetric, right? So what you can do is you can distribute, okay, the welds symmetrically with respect to, okay, the uh, C G. Whereas in the angle section, okay, this is not symmetric. So the weld at the top and the weld at the bottom will be of different lengths. Correct. The first observation that we are trying to talk about is section is symmetric. Correct. Now, the next one is having done that, okay, so the maximum length that we can accommodate at the top, okay, is 400 and the maximum that we can accommodate at the bottom is 400, okay. Why is that? Because we have said that, okay, so we have to limit, okay, the uh, overlap width as only 400 due to some reason over there, okay, it's not possible, okay, to have a overlap between the gazette and the channel section to be more than, okay, 400 mm. Correct. So, we are going to just put 400 mm at the top and 400 mm at the bottom. So, the maximum uh, length of weld we can accommodate at top and bottom is 800 mm. Correct. So, with this information, so let us try to calculate what is the remaining length of the weld. What is the remaining length of the weld? Correct. So, what is the remaining length of the weld? It is total length minus 2 times 400, that is at top and bottom. Correct. So, that means what? 1326 is the total length available. So, 200. So, that means Okay, we have to now think of, okay, accommodating, okay, a length of 526 mm, okay, in some fashion, correct. So, this is what you need to understand, am I clear, right. So, this is what we are now trying to propose, this is what we are trying to propose, correct. So, you need to understand that I, I did tell you that the channel section is symmetric about the centroidal axis, this we have already understood. Okay. So, hence the arrangement of the weld is symmetric. So, that means, okay, we are just trying to have the weld arrangement, okay, at the top and bottom very similarly, okay, unlike angle section, correct. And now, let us try to talk about, okay, having two slots. That means, at this particular channel, I am just trying to cut two openings, like if I just try to draw a figure like that. So, this is the uh, channel that we have here, okay, there is the top flange bottom flange like that. Now, what I am trying to do is, okay, I am just trying to make two openings, correct, two openings, all right, something like this. I am just trying to have two openings, something like this. Is it all right? I am going to cut, okay, cut this, something like this, okay. Sorry, I think that went off, okay. So, let me just try to do that properly, okay. Let me, let me do it again. So, I hope uh, I can manage with that. Correct? Sorry, again something went off. Right. Okay. So, 
the section would be something like this. Yeah, that is correct. Is it all right? I am just trying to cut the, the angle, okay, the web of the angle, something like this. I am just trying to create two slots like that. So, by doing this, what is it that we have achieved? What is it we have achieved? I can weld, I can weld, okay, this particular channel, okay, to the gusset plate even in this region, in this region. So, look at this, okay. So, I can have additionally, okay, weld placed, okay, in that particular channel. So, look at this, this is the slot, this is the opening that I have cut in the uh, channel section. By doing that, I can try to think of having more length, more welds, okay, in this particular region. So, right now, this is 400, that is 400 at the top and that is 400 at the bottom, correct. So, we have deducted 400 plus 400 from 1326. Correct? Is it all right? So, we are left with 526. So, that 526, okay, will be accommodated in, in this slot as well as in this particular portion. That is, this is one, 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 one portion, one portion, one portion, okay, like this. So, please understand, okay, we are just trying to do that. Now, in this particular case, we are trying to say let x, let x be the length of the slot. So, we are just trying to do a very simple calculation here to find what should be the length of the slot, okay, we should have so that we will, we, it is possible to have 526 millimeter length, okay, of weld, okay, in this particular arrangement. It is as simple as that. So, if you just try to look at this, so we are trying to make a simple calculation, right. So, remaining length is 526, correct, right, 1326 minus 400 and 400 remaining length. So, that will be equal to 4x. So, that means this is 1x, that is 2x, that is 3x and that is 4x. Correct? So, that is 4x plus 2 times 60. So, 160, 260. I can even weld, okay, over there. And even in between, I have 170. Correct? So, I am going to say 4x plus 2 times 60 plus 70. Correct? Is it all right? Or, okay, this would be, this will sum up to 190 or 526 minus 190 equal to 4x. Or if you simplify, okay, x should be 84. I am going to round it off to 90 millimeters. So, what we are trying to say is, okay, now you can easily accommodate, okay, you can easily accommodate, okay, the required, okay, the required uh, length of the weld by just trying to make this slot, okay, equal to 90 millimeters, okay. So, this is what you are trying to understand. This is a very simple straightforward problem. I make clear. So, that means first thing is we did calculate the design strength, okay, of this particular channel section. Correct. We, we, we have just tried to find the design strength of this particular channel section and having done that, okay, we would like to know what is the total length of the weld required, correct. And, and first we have arrived at an appropriate size over here, okay. In this case, we have worked it out as 5 mm and if you are just trying to use a 5 mm uh, weld in this particular case, size of the weld. So, what is the total length required, okay, is what we have calculated that came up to 1326 and you deducted this 400 at top and bottom because the overlap, there is a provision, okay, you cannot exceed that, okay. If this limitation were not to be there, definitely I would have said 1326 divided by 2, correct. I got some number over there, okay, something like about uh, 675, whatever it is, okay. And then I will say, look, the length of this should have been 675 or 680 and then would have closed the problem. But here, we would like to make you understand that it is also possible to have additional length of the weld by creating slots and we are just trying to make the length of the slot as x and then this is how we would try to calculate the length of the x. I hope this problem was uh, quite uh, uh, simple. I hope you have understood the concept behind solving this particular problem, okay. Now, we, on to, we move on to the next problem that we are trying to talk about. And this problem, whatever we are trying to talk about, okay, is with respect to uh, 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 the, the design of lug angle, design of lug angle. I hope you have understood that uh, lug angles are provided generally when the uh, force transferred, okay, uh, uh, is quite large, correct. And whenever when the tr force transferred is quite large, especially in case of uh, uh, angle sections, you understand that which is uh, not symmetric and again only one leg is connected right, there would be an effect of shear lag. To minimize that, we try to provide lug angles. So, this entire problem what we are trying to talk about, okay, is uh, with respect to uh, the uh, design of lug angles, okay, how exactly we try to do this. Now, let us try and go through the problem here that we are trying to have here. So, a single angle member carries a factored axial tensile force of 400 kN. So, it is quite large, correct, 400 kN. So, this angle, 
Okay, this is the main angle that we are trying to talk about, main angle, correct? So this is supposed to carry a, a tensile force of uh, 400 kiloton factored. So obviously it would be somewhere here, correct? Somewhere here, unsymmetric. It's not at the midpoint, okay? Somewhere over there, okay? Which is equal to 400 kN factored load, correct? Now design the member, okay? So that means we have to even calculate what should be the size of this angle. Okay, what should be this angle made of? Size of the angle we are going to calculate. Okay, right, and the connection, right. So what we are trying to talk about is we are trying to design the member. Okay, uh, and and the angle, right? Okay, and please understand it's connecting a, a, a gusset plate of of, of uh, a twelve mm thick, right? Twelve mm thick plate. Then it uh, gusset plate is trying to connect over there, right? And the yield strength of the material, right, have been given. So this is what we are trying to talk about, okay. So now we have to design the uh, main angle, the size of the main angle, the size of the gazette plate and also the connections, also the connections, right, three connections coming up. So this comprise of uh, designing the main angle, designing the lug angle, that means arriving at the sections and then uh, talking about the connections, okay, one between the main angle and the gazette plate, then the lug angle and the gazette plate and the outstanding leg of the main angle with the outstanding leg of the uh, lug angle. So this is what we are just trying to look at into this particular problem, correct? So let us just try to go through this particular problem quickly. Now the first task that we are trying to talk about is, okay, so for the main angle, for the main angle, how to calculate the gross area, how to calculate the gross area of the main angle is what we are trying to talk about. And we are just trying to use uh, the formula given in clause 633, correct? So this can be made use of to arrive at the approximate net area required, okay, for the main angle, correct? So clause 633 gives you this formula, that is the net design strength, okay, of, uh, of, of the member where we have some bolts over there, correct, is equal to alpha an fu by gamma m1. I hope you remember this particular expression. We have done this. Now here an is the net area that we should have for the uh, angle, correct? Fu is the ultimate strength of the material, gamma m1, okay, is the PSF, partial Z factor 1.25 and TDN, now look at this TDN, we are just trying to equate it to that 400 kN, okay, that we, we, that we just talked about right now. So let us try to do this and to get the value of alpha, so we know that uh, we are just trying to arrive at some numbers, depends on the number of bolts that we would have. And if you just try to recollect if the bolts are 4 and more, okay, it will be equal to 0.8. So let's try to look at that, okay. So we are just trying to say, let us assume 4 bolts here, alpha is 0.8, okay. And when do we say 0.8? When the bolts are 4 and more, correct, it is 0.8. So that means this is known, okay, we have got that, okay. And this, okay, this is assumed, right, 14 megapascals. And this is 1.25. And this is important, okay. You are going to take this as okay, 400 kN, we are going to take this as 400 kN, that is a design uh, load, okay, that the member should take. Now once with this information, okay, you got the value of the net area, okay, required. And when we say net area, please understand it is after deducting for the opening due to bolts. So to account that, we are going to increase, okay, increase by 15 percent and then arrive at the gross area. Is it all right? So that's the net area, you increase by 15 percent, you get the gross area in this particular case, correct? Now having got the gross area, so this is the gross area that, this is the gross area that we had required. Now we are going to take from steel tables, okay, use steel tables, steel tables, correct, and choose an angle section, choose an angle section, right, whose area is more than 1573.1. So the, we have chosen okay, an angle IS uh, 125 by 75 by 10, unequal angle, correct, and please understand that, uh, okay, this one has an area of, correct, 1902 millimeter square, correct. How did we arrive at this particular uh, angle? So we, are, we have chosen from steel table such that, okay, the area of this angle is more than what is required. So this is a required area, 1573.31 mm square, I have just tried to choose a, a larger area. And here I have deliberately taken, okay, an unequal angle here because, okay, so we are trying to have uh, a larger leg connecting the gazette plate and the smaller leg, okay, to be an outstanding leg, okay, that's how we have designed. So now the first thing that we have done is, okay, we have got, we have designed the main angle, correct, like this. 
my next task okay is to uh, uh, design the lug angle correct my next task is to design the lug angle so let's try to see how we design the lug angle in this particular case so i'm just trying to repeat almost the uh, a similar step that we are trying to talk about correct and uh, okay uh, i think in this particular case i'm just trying to even uh, make a check okay in this before i go to the lug angle i'm trying to make a check okay with respect to yield strength and then i'm just trying to prove that the the yield strength okay of the main angle okay that is gross section yielding okay what is the load required to make it make uh, the gross section yielding to be uh, is, it, is it really more than 400 kn okay i'm just trying to make a simple check for the angle that i have just calculated 125 75 by 10 so i'm just trying to use this particular formula in this particular case and if we just try to recollect the value of ag 1902 is what we have done so i'm just trying to uh, replace okay so this ag correct by 1902 okay the yield strength is 250 gamma m0 is 1.10 so this value has been given as 432.30 and then please understand we have compared that with the factored load 400 kn and we are trying to say that okay this section does not undergo gross yielding okay yielding of gross section okay when you just try to apply a load of 400 because you require a load of 432.30 kn so we have okay now we have Ah, uh, we are satisfied with this uh, uh, angle. That is 125 by 75 by 10. So with this, now we are just trying to go with the next uh, discussion. That is, we are just trying to design, okay, the uh, uh, lug angle. Okay, we are just trying to do uh, the lug angle. And first thing is, we are just trying to do uh, similar steps as what we did in case of uh, main angle. So what are the similar steps that we are trying to talk about? So if we just try to look at this, okay, the first thing is total factored load is 400 kn. Correct. Total factored load is 400 kn. Now you have to understand. Okay. So for what load should I design for this lug angle? What is the load for main angle? We took entire 400 kn, and then we said, okay, what should be the net area, or what should be the gross area, and then uh, we, we we did some calculation, and then we proved that. Okay. So the the strength is uh, more than that. Okay. That's how you you arrived at. Correct. But how regarding lug angle? So we need to understand for what force we have to design the lug angle. Now you need to understand this clause, okay? Clause ten point twelve point two. Now if you just try to open out ten ten point twelve point two code or clause. So he he says that the lug angle, okay, should should take a load not less than twenty percent, okay, of the load carried by the outstanding leg. Okay, what do you mean by that? So if I have my main angle like that, so that's the main angle that we have here. So this is the connecting leg. Connecting leg. That is the outstanding leg. Outstanding leg. Correct. First thing is you have to calculate. Okay, what part of 400? This is the total load carried. What part of load is carried by the outstanding leg? This is outstanding leg. So how much load? Okay, will be carried by the outstanding leg is what you need to understand. So once you have calculated that part of the information, correct? You have to understand that. Okay, you have to increase. Okay, 20 percent. In excess, okay, 20 percent more than that. I make clear. So you just try to calculate, okay, some part of 400 is carried by the outstanding leg. You would increase that by 20 percent and then design the lug angle. So this is what you need to understand here very clearly. Is it all right? Okay, main angle we designed for entire 400 kn. For lug angle, you have to just calculate what is the load carried by the outstanding leg of the main angle. Increase it by 20 percent. and you need to understand that is the force okay that that should be taken to to design the lug angle i hope this is very clear now the question is how to calculate the load taken by the outstanding leg so it's very simple correct so you know the total area you know the total area of the angle correct 1902 mm square okay now we just try to calculate the outstanding leg area okay we just try to calculate the outstanding leg area that is the gross okay how do i do that so this this is Okay, now we just try to assume some dimension. I'm just trying to let you know. So I'll be knowing this length. Okay, I'll be knowing this length. That is 75. So this length is 75 mm, 75. Correct. Thickness is 10. Correct. Is it all right? So uh, uh, and, and you need to understand that I have to I have to deduct half t by 2 from this length because okay, half of thickness belongs to this and half of thickness belongs to this length. So I'm going to say 75 minus t by 2. That will be the uh, width of this particular outstanding leg of the main angle multiplied by 10. That should give you the 
total area gross area of the outstanding leg correct so what we say is right so the load carried by the outstanding leg okay will be in proportion to the area of the outstanding leg with respect to the total area so it means this divided by the total area into 400 will give you the load carried by the outstanding leg so let us look into that calculation okay quickly i make clear so what we are trying to do in this particular case is so we are trying to say load carried by okay the outstanding leg okay this is what we have said so that is this is what we have just calculated okay 75 minus 10 by 2 into 10 that is 700 mm square so what is this width of the outstanding leg okay minus t by 2 into 10 so this is the area that we are trying to have here 700 mm square correct so once you have got this so we are going to say area of the outstanding leg divided by the total area into the load carried so that is 147.2 kilonewtons so that's what we have here now we are going to increase it by 20 percent that value and this is what we have got okay so you need to design the lug angle okay for a force of 176.64 kn correct so this is what is important for you correct now once having got that particular value okay once having got that particular value that is 176.64 kn correct this particular force now i'm just trying to calculate right right so what is the size of the angle that we have to choose what is the size of the angle that i have to choose so for which again i go back to class 633 i go back to class 633 i have this particular expression and from this expression i calculate the net area required for the lug angle which i'm going to increase by say 15 percent to get the gross area of the lug angle correct so again the same formula that we used alpha is a number depends on the number of boards that we have here a in is the net area that we are going to calculate f u and gamma m1 okay are the material properties psf and tdn we are going to equate okay this to the previous force of 176.64 correct so let's try to look into these uh, calculations so alpha 0.8 is what we are going to take so f u 14 gamma m1 okay yeah that is uh, 1.25 and this is what we are trying to do 176.64 okay with this information correct we can easily get the value of a n the value of a n we have got is 673.17 mm square and we are going to increase this by we are going to increase this by 15 percent and this is what we have got 774.15 mm square correct now we just try to choose this information go to the steel table right so go to the steel table and then select okay go to the steel table is it all right and then select this particular angle correct and look at this okay for this the area is this 1138 and it is more than 774.15 mm square correct it is more than 774.115 mm square we are just chosen okay an angle slightly more and in this particular case the most important thing that you have to observe is okay while choosing this particular angle please understand that okay we have chosen an equal angle here 75 75 this 75 is to match okay the uh, width of the uh, outstanding leg so please understand okay this uh, the, the uh, main angle is like this okay so this is the longer leg that is a shorter leg and when you just trying to do the uh, lug, uh, lug angle please understand that okay the length of your lug angle and the length of the out, uh, I mean main angle outstanding legs they should be same otherwise it is difficult for you to have the connections it is difficult to have the connections is it all right so you have to keep in mind correct so the the size of the out uh, uh, I mean uh, lug angle correct should match the size of the outstanding leg of the uh, main angle so, okay that's what we have done okay so we've chosen the legs as 75 so that okay they coincide correct is what we are trying to talk about so keeping size of the outstanding leg same for main and lug angle so with this okay we have even arrived at okay arrived at okay the sizes of both uh, main angle and uh, lug angle okay this is what we have done so once you have done this okay now we are uh, uh, going to the connection part connection part correct now regarding the connection part please understand there are three connections that we are trying to have here so the first one main angle with the gusset plate the second one main angle with the lug angle and lug angle with the gusset plate so we just try to quickly look into that so that is your gusset plate that we are trying to have here okay and then we have the okay then we have the main angle okay something like that and then maybe you have the uh, uh, lug angle correct so this is the gusset plate 
that is the, that's the uh, main angle, that's the gazette, that's the uh, lug angle. So we are trying to just talk about connections here, connections here and connections here. Correct? The first one, main angle with gazette plate. Okay, that is the main angle gazette plate. So this connection is what we are trying to look at. The second one, main angle with lug angle. So that is the main angle and lug angle. We are trying to talk about this connection. And third one, lug angle with the gazette. So this is lug angle gazette. So we are trying to have three connections in this particular case. Please understand. Now the first thing that you need to understand is we are just talking about bolted connections here. Correct? Now uh, we already learned the design strength of the bolt. So assuming a 20 mm bolt size, look at this. Okay, we have said that the bolt value in this case would be okay 45.26 kn single shear because there I mean it's just a gazette and and one angle okay so i hope you are familiar with this particular uh, uh, thing and the next one is regarding the pitch right so minimum pitch that we are trying to have is 2.5 times the nominal diameter of the bolt so that would be 50 millimeters. I'm just trying to choose a pitch of 50 mm here. And regarding the end distance, okay, I'm just trying to choose minimum 1.5 into 20, that is 30 mm. So look at this, they are minimum values. I'm just trying to provide, I'm just trying to provide, okay, a pitch of 50 mm, okay, and then, okay, an end distance of 40, okay. So this is what I'm just trying to go in for detailing. When I detail, okay, I'll be choosing the pitch as 50 and end distance as 40 millimeters. Okay, so let's try to quickly look into this uh, calculations. Okay, with respect to uh, with respect to the uh, uh, connection one. So look at this connection between main angle and gazette plate. So we are just looking at this particular connection. Okay, how to connect the gazette and the main angle. So this is the main angle that we are trying to talk about, and that is a gazette plate. So we are just trying to look at this. Now the first thing that you need to understand is okay, this connection should resist what force? Okay, should resist what force, correct? So what we are trying to do is, okay, the bolt connection should be designed, this one should be designed to resist a force, okay, that is transferred in the connecting leg, okay? So whatever force that is gets transferred here, okay, from the connecting leg to the gazette plate is the one uh, force that you have to consider for this particular connection, right? So how do we calculate this force? So what we say is, okay, this force, whatever we are trying to uh, arrive at here, Right? So that will be in proportion okay, to the area okay, with respect to the total area. So again similar to that, you calculate the area okay, of the connecting leg, compare that with respect to the total leg, you get some ratio, right? you multiply it by 400, correct? you get the force transferred by the connecting leg, very similar to what we had discussed earlier. Right? Okay? So uh, this is what we said. Now gross area of the connected leg, how do you calculate the area of the connected leg, gross area? Is it all right? So it's nothing but total length. What is total length? 125. Okay, you deduct half thickness. Okay, that is T by 2 multiplied by 10. That will give you the total area, 1200. Okay, you, you don't need to worry about the bolt holes. Okay, we are talking about the gross area of the connected leg. Okay, gross area of the connected leg. Total length minus T by 2 into thickness. That will give you 1200. So once you have done this, correct? So you are just trying to say that is 1200. Okay, by uh, 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 1200 by 9902, correct? So into 400, correct? So this is total force. So please understand, this is nothing but area of the connected leg by total area, okay, into force that we have here, correct? So this is the ratio, 1200 by 9902 into 400, this is the force, okay, that we have to take for the design of this particular connection. And we have taken the bolt strength as 45.26, so that has given us 5.58. So we say you have to provide six numbers of bolts. And if you just try to look at this, this is how we have provided bolt, okay? One, two, three, four, five, six. Look at this. These bolts are connecting the, the uh, connected leg of the main angle with the gazette plate. And this oh, these are the pitches, 50, okay, right? And these are the end distances, 40. And this is how you arrive at the connection, okay, between uh, the gazette Okay, and the uh, connecting leg of the main angle. Similarly, if you just try to look at the next one, correct? So we are just talking about connection between the main angle and the lug angle. So we are just trying to talk about this connection is what you need to understand. So again, what force, okay, right, is required, okay, for us to design this particular connection. So again, if you just try to look at a class 10.12.2, so we say that it should be 40% in excess of the load carried by the outstanding leg. Right? 
outstanding leg. How do we calculate outstanding force carried by outstanding leg? Gross area of the outstanding leg divided by the total area of the section member that multiplied by okay, uh, 400. So, that is how you do that, correct. So, first thing is okay, calculate the force okay, in, the, in, the connect, uh, in the outstanding leg and that will be proportional to the area okay, of that particular leg. So, how do I do that, correct. So, gross area of outstanding leg. So, outstanding leg it is 75, correct. So, we try to say 75 minus T by 2 into thickness will give you the uh, gross area of the outstanding leg. So, having got the gross area of the outstanding leg, we again use an equation. Okay? So, this is nothing but gross area of the outstanding leg divided by the total area of the angle into 400. So, that will give you the force carried by the outstanding leg, but we have said okay, 40 percent in excess. So, we are going to multiply by 1.4, so that will give you the force okay, that we have to take to design this particular connection. So, once you have taken that particular force, you divide by the bolt value, you get it as 4.55. So, we say okay, 5 numbers. Am I clear? This is what you need to understand. Okay? So, this is nothing but connecting between main angle and lug angle, correct? Main angle and lug angle. Okay? This is what you need to understand. So, just try to look here. So, you need to understand that. Okay? So, there would be there would be 5 bolts okay, required there would be 5 bolts required, okay, right. That is, you can clearly see here, there is 1, 2, 3, 4 and 5, correct. I hope you are trying to see that, okay, right. These 5, 1, correct, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, okay. That is, these are the pitch and these are the spacings, correct. So, this is how you try to do this, okay. This is how we have designed. Now, we will come to the last connection that we are trying to talk about. So, that is nothing but this connection. Is it all right? Correct. So, that is connection between what? Lug angle and the gusset plate. First thing is you should know what is the force that we have to have here. So, according to class 10, 12.2, 20 percent in excess of the outstanding leg, 20 percent in excess of the outstanding leg. Calculations are very similar. So, that is obviously the force carried by the outstanding leg is proportional to its area is what we have said. So, what is the gross area of the outstanding leg? So, uh, that is uh, outstanding leg 75. Okay, minus T by 2 into 10 okay, will be equal to 700 mm square. So, all these things are with respect to the main member. All these things are with respect to the main member is what you need to understand. Okay. So, having done that, okay, we are going to take 20 percent in excess. So, the first thing is 700 by 1902. Okay. This is nothing but area of the outstanding leg by gross area into factored load. Correct. So, uh, uh, we get that value, you increase by 20 percent, you got this value 176.65. So, now that is how, that is the force that we have to take here for the design. So, that divided by the bolt value is 3.90, however, I have taken slightly a one more extra over there, 5 numbers and now you are trying to see this okay, connection here. So, that is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, correct. So, both, uh, that is 20 mm bolts, fine numbers and this is how we have tried to arrive at the connection. Is it all right? So, if you just try to recollect, so this is how we have tried to do all the connections. Is it all right? Connection 1, connection 2, connection 3 as well as the main angle and the lug angle, correct? So, I hope you have understood this particular discussion uh, clearly. So, uh, coming to some important references okay, that we are just trying to look at in this particular exercise, okay, Subramanium, Dugal and uh, uh, the code, uh, obviously IS 800 2007. So, I will just try to use some of these uh, for my references. Apart from that, okay, we have some uh, internet websites, okay, I will just try to pick up okay, uh, to, to see that this particular discussion is quite interesting. So, I hope you have enjoyed uh, uh, looking at this uh, uh, presentation on uh, design of tension members. Okay? Uh, uh, hope uh, this entire presentation, okay, seven sessions that I have done with respect to this particular topic, design of tension members under module 4 okay, of your uh, syllabus right, is, is quite, quite useful to you. Right? So, anyway, I would be ending this session by this uh, note. Okay? So, thank you. I hope you had a good uh, uh, learning. Okay, in this particular presentation. Thank you.